Of the many tough and fearless characters that we meet throughout the Harry Potter books, one man that I think is overlooked is Rufus Scrimgeour. Described as a man of action by Albus Dumbledore, Rufus did not underestimate Voldemort. Despite being captured and then brutally tortured by the Dark Lord, his final moments were that of his outright refusal to give up any information on Harry Potter or any information in general that would aid Voldemort and his Death Eaters. So let's take a look at the man himself. Let's look at his story. This is the life of Rufus Scrimgeour. Not much is known about Scrimgeour's early life. It is believed that he was born in Wales, although the town or place is unknown. The name Scrimgeour comes from the old French word Eskimisur, meaning fencer, which in turn comes from the old German word Skirman, which is meant to defend. It's a suiting name for a man who fought for many years defending the wizarding world as an auror. Given his career and being from Britain, it's most likely that Rufus attended Hogwarts School of Witchcraft and Wizardry. And due to his bravery and courage in facing Voldemort head on, I believe that Scrimgeour would have been sorted into Gryffindor House. There's no indication of his age, but he appears to be in his 60s. However, wizards do live for a lot longer than muggles, so once again it's difficult to pinpoint what decade Scrimgeour was born in. If he was in his 60s however, as it appears to me anyway, he would have been born in the late 1920s, early 30s, just as Grindelwald was at his peak. It's also quite possible that Albus Dumbledore taught him at one point during his schooling days. Now I know that there's not a lot of information on Rufus Scrimgeour's early life, but I do find it very enjoyable trying to figure out things like his age, his Hogwarts house, and if in fact he was taught by people like Albus Dumbledore or even Horace Slughorn. And I believe that's why J.K. Rowling leaves things out. If we keep guessing and theorising, Harry Potter will never die. Anyway, let's move on to some solid information. After graduating Hogwarts, Scrimgeour joined the Auror's office at the Ministry of Magic. He needed to complete a series of difficult character and aptitude tests, and would have worked with an Auror of a more experienced nature. He rose through the Auror ranks, becoming head of the office, and would have participated in the first Wizarding War against Voldemort and his Death Eaters. Although, whether it was on the field of battle or a tactical behind the scenes approach remains unknown, due to him not garnering very much attention as Aurors such as mad Moody had. Now, I've previously made a video on mad Moody's life, and also my good friend Morgan over at Movie Flame just released an incredible video on the Auror too, so make sure to check out both videos, links are in the description. With Voldemort finally into the open and declaring war on Britain's wizarding and mughal communities, it forced the wizarding community to unite and call for the resignation of Cornelius Fudge. In the fortnight following the Battle of the Department of Mysteries and the Ministry's acknowledgement of Lord Voldemort's return, Minister Cornelius Fudge was, as the quibbler went on to report, chased from his office. Fudge left office in disgrace and was replaced by the more ostensibly proactive Scrimgeour. Gowan Robards replaced Scrimgeour as head of the Aura office. Soon after, Scrimgeour made a speech to the Ministry and the Daily Prophet about dark times, and trying to better protect Britain from dark wizards better than the previous year, as the Ministry under Fudge had denied any evidence of Voldemort's return, and branded Albus Dumbledore and Harry Potter liars for saying the opposite. Scrimgeour, though seemingly more capable than Fudge, decided to prioritise appearances over truth in his battle against Voldemort. Apparently, Scrimgeour distrusted Albus Dumbledore in a similar way to Fudge before him, as he assigned Aura John Dawlish to follow Dumbledore during his frequent departures from Hogwarts, ultimately resulting in the Aura being jinxed by Dumbledore himself. He ordered the arrest of Stan Shunpike, a conductor on the night bus, to give the impression that the Ministry was actively seeking and arresting Death Eaters, even though it was apparent to Harry that Shunpike was innocent and merely foolish. He also quarrelled with Albus Dumbledore over the use of Harry Potter, the alleged chosen one as a mascot for the Ministry to boost morale. 
On Christmas Day 1996, which Harry spent at the borough in Devon, Scrimger came to visit him. Accompanied by Percy Weasley, whom he used as a pretext, Scrimger took Harry for a walk around the garden, during which he tried to get answers out of Harry about what Dumbledore was doing, and suggested that the Ministry would be grateful if Harry was to visibly align himself with them. Harry, revolted by the Minister's hypocrisy, refused further assistance, saying that the new Ministry was as bad in its own way as the old one. After Dumbledore's death atop of the Astronomy Tower in the summer of 1997, Scrimger and a delegation of Ministry officials came for a short stay at Hogwarts Castle so that they could attend Dumbledore's funeral. Rufus was seated in the front row, alongside Minerva McGonagall, looking grave and dignified. After the service, Scrimger once more tried to convince Harry Potter to openly support the Ministry's endeavours, and Harry once again refused. He spoke to Harry once more at the borough on July 31st, a month after Dumbledore's death, to release the contents of the late wizard's will to Harry, Ron and Hermione, interrupting Harry's birthday party. Scrimger appeared to have aged considerably as a result of working to retain control of the wizarding community, which was in a state of open warfare. He had delayed releasing Dumbledore's personal bequests for 31 days under the decree for justifiable confiscation in order to inspect the items. Scrimger bombarded the trio with questions, attempting to discern Dumbledore's intentions, and was highly suspicious of the gifts he had left him. The Deluminator for Ron, a Golden Snitch for Harry, and an original copy of the Tales of Beetle and the Bard for Hermione. Scrimger refused to give Harry Dumbledore's final bequest, Godric Gryffindor's sword, believing it to be an historical artifact and public property which Dumbledore therefore had no right to dispose of as he saw fit. When Harry criticised Scrimger for wasting his time scrutinising Dumbledore's things and for covering up the recent escape of dozens of Death Eaters from Azkaban, the two came close to a duel, in spite of Scrimger's claim that he in fact sought to work together in order to fight Voldemort. The arrival of Arthur and Molly Weasley forced Scrimger to regain composure and then depart. Scrimger correctly guessed that there might be something hidden inside the Golden Snitch, although he never found out what, as Dumbledore had ensured that the snitch would only open at the close. The following day, on August 1st, 1997, the Death Eater staged a successful coup on the Ministry, as they now had agents loyal to them surrounding the Minister, and as such were able to make a successful attempt on his life. Pius Thicknees, the head of the Department of Magical Law Enforcement and several other high-ranking Ministry officials had all been placed under the Imperious Curse. Scrimger was captured and brutally tortured by Voldemort for information on Harry Potter's whereabouts. Scrimger, having, as was described, put up quite a fight in his final moments, refused to talk despite knowing where Harry was. The official line to Scrimger's murder was that he resigned. In his place, Thick Knees was appointed as a puppet minister under Voldemort's control. Harry, Ron and Hermione came to respect Scrimger after learning of his sacrifice. It is assumed that after Voldemort's defeat, Scrimger's assassination was exposed, but the subject is still unclear. What is clear, however, is that despite appearing more capable to handle the role of Minister for Magic, Scrimger, like his predecessor Cornelius Fudge, still wished to avoid showing any weakness to the public, as he feared it would spark a panic as it did many years prior in the First Wizarding War. But while Fudge denied Voldemort's return to spare such public worry, Scrimger tried to hide the continuous growing threat that Voldemort was becoming. It seemed that keeping the Wizarding community calm was a priority like it was with Fudge, when the main focus should have been preparing the community for war instead of tricking them into a false sense of safety. Rufus Scrimger did what he thought needed to be done, but it's not what I believe what he wanted to do. His true character surfaced in the closing moments of his life, refusing to submit despite such horrific torture. He died knowing he denied Voldemort, frustrating the Dark Lord and delaying his plans.
Thank you so much for watching. I truly, truly appreciate your support. Everyone, notifications of uploads are more important than ever. So please, if you haven't already, turn those notifications on to make sure you're notified the moment my video goes live. Making videos is what I love to do. It's my dream and my passion. However, it does cost time and money to produce this content. So if you have a dollar to spare to support me on Patreon in exchange for some exclusive unseen content, then you can click the Patreon link below or at the end of this video. Please only support me if you can afford it. And make sure to follow me on Instagram at InstaDNJ and on Twitter at Potter Folklore. Check out my other videos appearing on screen and please make sure, most importantly, to hit that subscribe button. Thanks again everyone and please have a great day.